One entrepreneur needed a good employee. And not just a simple good one, but he needed uh, the head of the department, a person he could trust. And so he decided that he would interview those people themselves. And the first uh, came somebody who had this journalist's approach to life. And the journalist uh, asked, that the entrepreneur asked, uh, what's two times two? And the guy answered 22. Okay, he wanted to hear the next one. The next one came and had an engineer's approach. And so again, uh, he calculated on his phone that 2 plus 2 is um, starting from 3.9999 till uh, 4.0001. Engineer's uh, view. Engineers are wonderful, but the next one who came uh, was a person with a lawyer's approach. And when he was asked the question, uh, how much is two and two, he said that this is uh, specific in case Bergenson against uh, the customs officials, it was proved that two plus two is four. And the last one who came and wanted to get this job was a person with accountant's approach. And when the entrepreneur asked uh, how much is 2 plus 2, he closed the door, returned back, sat down at the table and uh, leaned over the table and silently said, and how much you want it to be? And he got the job. You know, for us also, we have our own ideas and uh, assurances. Somebody is a legal theologian, somebody is like a journalist uh, view at all spiritual and God's things, somebody is an engineer. But in the end, what's the meaning? If it's important what he is thinking, what he wants. This is the most important. And this morning, my dear friend, let God help us so that I may reach you and that you can hear what the Holy Spirit this morning wants to tell you. Those events in Ukraine, they reveal clearly to us that all of us have to be prepared. We don't know what's going to happen with our lives tomorrow. Yes, uh, right now nothing on our borders endangers us, but at the same time, my dear friends, we cannot be sure that uh, we might succeed to live up to the best point of your spiritual life, that you will get to the position that you are so uh, enlightened and uh, the Lord says, yeah, let's, uh, it's time to die and you're like, yes, let's go. Um, so there is not uh, such a guarantee. You have to be ready to meet the Lord every moment, every moment to be prepared. And remember, the Lord gave us the word, be prepared, uh, be prepared your uh, lamp because uh, you are going towards your uh, bridegroom. But to be honest, is this so critical? You said that that everything would be good. Somebody said, tell, tell it again, that everything would be good. They wouldn't attack us. Um, yeah, I said, in this vision they didn't attack. Oh, it's so happy to, to hear it, but so hard to believe it. Say it again. And you know, I needed to think why I believe that this is uh, this warning of the Holy Spirit for us, uh, like a revelation from the Holy Spirit. But uh, why the Holy Spirit revealed it to, to us? What do you think? Sometimes I tend to think that uh, people think that this is just a warning. Just don't worry, don't change anything. As you live, continue, continue living the same way. Not the, the worst things are not going to happen. Just uh, relax and everything is going to be fine. Is it the warning and the goal of the Holy Spirit no, not to, to relax? 
as it is, it's good. I believe that it scares me. It should be like uh, something totally opposite. God's warning always is with a specific goal for us to be aware that we live in a dangerous place, that we live in the circumstances of war, and our enemy, the devil, is all the time walking around and looking for something to devour. Yeah, yesterday he couldn't, but what about today? And you know, I would like to remind uh, scripture from Second Chronicles 20:20. 20, 20. There was one of the kings at that uh, time, Jehoshaphat, and he received promise from God that you will have victory in your fights and you will uh, kill your enemies. And what is he saying? Verse 20. And so he says, uh, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. He had received the word, but um, he is like, it's not going to happen automatically. It doesn't mean that we just relax, and everything is good, we can have fun. No, he is saying, believe, and we know that believing is not just something, some passive religious thought that after death it's going to be better. Believing is an active position, an active position of life. If we want, uh, it's not like... Uh, Drifting somewhere spiritually, this is rowing, it means you sit down, you know where you are going to, you know that something uh, depends also on you in this life. And we know that when Jesus got into this world, he was with ideal faith, he was God, and we uh, at the same time human, he was a perfect Christian if we want to, to say like that. But uh, at the same time, he all the time was praising those people who had faith. And he said, your faith will help you. Your faith gave you this and that. And when Joseph uh, says, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. So, Vilnius, did you just say that you are a prophet? I didn't want to say anything about myself. Although, sometimes I feel like maybe I'm making a mistake. Maybe I'm really making a mistake. Maybe it's not like that. But sometimes I feel like that uh, we have very short memory. And I will speak about it, I will tell it. In the US, among uh, some Christian broadcasts, is uh, another broadcast where the, uh, Sid Roth, um, he invites uh, people who are telling about uh, absolute miracles, absolute amazing miracles. And the more mirac miraculous uh, things you are telling, the more you are invited to this broadcast. And I really believe that God is uh, doing miracles, but you know something I don't believe in? I don't believe that there are chosen people, that are between all those uh, masses of people, there are some very, very special people, and in their life happens some miraculous, dramatic things, unusual things. The Bible says that God doesn't look at the face of people, for, and he, uh, this rule of faith works in all our lives equally. If you have faith, you can receive from God. If you don't have faith, you can be uh, beautiful, you can sit on the golden pot, um, but you will not receive. But if you have faith, the power of God will operate in your life. And if you don't have faith, you can be called uh, intercontinental apostle and nothing would work in your life. And in this broadcast, sometime before the last uh, elections in the US, prophets came, and all of them prophesied that Trump would become a president, till the very end. All the time people were telling what they were dreaming and how God was speaking to them and the angels said this and that, and nothing of uh, that uh, happened. 
And there were also people who um, said that you can call back your hair that you have lost. I am grateful to those people who sent to me those broadcasts. Vilnius, hold on, we will. It will be for nicer for us to look if you had more hair. So there were people also who said that you can get back your teeth, uh, which were uh, taken out. Uh, you can call them and they would return. I'm making jokes now, but there were also people who said that you can get your baby teeth back and start everything from the scratch. There is a very good principle how you cannot uh, be deceived, and this principle is that what God wants or or He can do, it, there has to be a precedent in, in the Bible. Bible is a precedent. Uh, and it's clearly written that it is possible and it could be done. And if somebody comes to you, and, and we are, of course, very creative personalities, uh, people say, for example, that uh, uh, disciples said they did better than the teacher. Kenneth Hagen, I believe, he was very balanced, uh, teacher of the Word of God, but those who uh, came after him uh, overemphasized uh, his theology up to the ditches with um, some uh, overemphasizing something. And so in this um, broadcasting there were quite a lot of uh, fake prophets with uh, great names and people are still watching those broadcasts and they are excited about all those miracles. And I started this not uh, because uh, God is not uh, doing miracles and that He is unable to warn, but I would like more trust somebody whom I know and whose life and uh, and whose revelation is uh, something that I can follow a little bit and, and see what happens. I don't know whether you, Priyakovest people, remember something from our life uh, and our fights we have gone through. And today I will not take time to remind about critical situations, for example, when we started to buy this house and how without money we signed uh, contracts with huge amounts of money and, and how God gave uh, as a revelation that our house will be uh, linked uh, to the iron doors and riches uh, uh, stored in darkness and all this was here. And imagine if uh, our uh, church was in Kiev now, we would be able to go to our church and at night we would sleep just down there in the basement. But, uh, and I also would like to remind one situation. Uh, there was a crisis in the year 2000. There was a time before 2000 when it was said that in 2000 and the New Year's Eve, uh, when all the computers are programmed uh, and also the nuclear stations and everything is programmed up to the 2000 because people were not expecting we would uh, exceed the year 2000, and when to the year 2000 come, the chaos would uh, start. There wouldn't be water, electricity, traffic lights, so airplanes wouldn't be able to uh, fly and so on. And uh, in the worldly area it wasn't so wide, but in spiritual uh, there were so many prophets who were saying uh, about uh, terrible times, P Christians were uh, buying uh, rifles and also buying uh, food and storing and then they were thinking that those unbelievers would come to me and that I would kill them with those rifles. And the idea that we Christians would kill all those uh, hungry people when they would come uh, and try to uh, eat uh, to get our food. That would have warned us already because it was uh, such a dangerous idea. But there was also this idea here in Riga. There was a meeting of pastors and some of them were telling what they had heard and how they are preparing for this crisis. And in one of these meetings uh, there were um, some more than 10 pastors and one pastor said that they had collected 6,000 uh, uh, lats and they had purchased uh, uh, the disposable food. Uh, 
like um, a small food packages when uh, when these bad things would start and chaos would start happening and that they would feed those uh, hungry people and in all this big meeting I stood up and I was the only one who stood up and I said that the Lord told me that nothing like that would happen and the leader said it can't be so and then I said a courageous word you have nowhere to put your money give it to us but don't spend for these uh, food packages nobody would need them and this is publicly and I praised myself a little bit for this and I just want you to remind that for several times God has taken us through the situations when there were high risks and at that time I also had an opportunity for a short moment uh, to speak to Ingrid Udre she was uh, the head of our parliament and I was able to talk to her and afterwards I asked her and I said Ingrid what is going on is our country thinking about it preparing because it seemed that uh, nobody was talking about it it in our country. She said, you know, we have calculated everything, tried out everything, nothing like that would happen. And at that moment, I also got respect towards uh, the state officials that, no, it's not like that they are just sitting there and uh, getting uh, our money. There are a lot of uh, really honest and uh, uh, smart people. And when I say people, of course, uh, they are with their weaknesses. Uh, unfortunately, the angels don't uh, become uh, pa deputy, uh, parliament members and so on. They are the same humans so with uh, weaknesses and strengths and so on. And at that moment I uh, developed a respect towards our state that there is an order, there are services, there are people who care and who are trying to prepare for the our XX. And as, as much as we know, uh, 22 years later, that nothing like that happened, everything worked and no, no problems uh, were uh, happening and I know Christians and also entrepreneurs who made a big money based on this on this X hour in uh, 2000 uh, they were selling their seminars and advice and they were training employees what to do and how to do and I am saying this uh, because uh, my dear friends I believe God gave this warning and this revelation to us not to, to calm down but to believe that God is for us that God is for Latvia and that we don't need uh, just to wait but uh, stand for our country but this warning is for us to take this word and say that God we believe we believe that you will protect we are praying for our country we are praying for our government uh, officials we are praying for our nation and our borders we are standing for this country Heavenly Father we give thanks that you will take us through this narrow place and now my dear brother and sister in my youth there was a saying that uh, all the bread in your stomach and all your belongings uh, you're wearing and this is about like young families uh, who don't have anything live uh, in a rented apartment to live from salary to salary and when they hear about these dangers the first thing they could uh, think that uh, we need to run away uh, pack uh, the bags and run away because the most precious what I have it it's my life. But this is not uh, done by those who believe. You cannot believe for um, things which are indifferent for you. You cannot believe for things which, you, which don't uh, cause you pain, you don't love. There is a saying, if you can live without it, uh, w without it you are searching from God. God has promised to you to do. If you can survive without it, you will survive. But if this, you would need this so much and, uh, and it would hurt you so much that you cannot live without it, then you will receive it.
And I would like to say, my dear friends, I wouldn't uh, judge an unbeliever who says, uh, my life is uh, the most precious for me. I would uh, flee to Norway, France, uh, Ireland, because there are higher salaries they would need uh, employees, I will find a job. But uh, when we, children of God, say this, uh, this there is something wrong. There is something wrong in all this. We should be those people who feel the, uh, connected to this country. We are invited, uh, called to be here. This is our responsibility. This is what God has given to us. So uh, God said, you are the salt uh, and light of this uh, country and you are not placed only here because it's good here, but also that you take responsibility over this country. And I don't know your situation. I don't know how you are feeling in this country. Maybe you're feeling that uh, you are discriminated a little bit. And I've uh, felt like that. And I believe the Christians here feel discriminated, uh, unheard, and uh, something is not given to them. But we were placed, and we are placed here to stand for this country and take care of it. And so, Heavenly Father, we love this country. We believe for this country. We believe that God is an, uh, fighting actively against uh, aggressor. I'm not against Russians, but for those people who are dying there under the bombs uh, in uh, these uh, cellars in desperation, God is for them. Yes, we are reading somewhere that Jesus said that, some, that things like that would happen, but when the burglar uh, comes to your house and Jesus has said that the thieves would steal and so on, and when the burglar comes, you are not saying, okay, take what you want. No, you oppose it and God helps you because he is on your side. And I absolutely believe that uh, we can believe for Ukraine that this war will not be turned uh, into the European war and that God wants to stop it. Stop it over there. And we can believe for it. Not only with uh, desire, an uh, attitude of desire, but um, uh, we say no in Jesus' name that there will not be shedding of blood. We don't agree to this. You know, I was in the Soviet army and uh, I had Ukrainians, fellow Russians and Russians next to me and, and many other nationalities. Uh, Russians are very, very nice guys. It's easy with them. Sometimes it was even uh, harder with uh, people of other nationalities. Russians are open and sincere. This is not uh, Russian so to go and steal and kill. It's it's not uh, Russians. This is something demonic, and we are the ones. We are the ones who can stand against uh, demons. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Today we will have Holy Communion. And this is the establishment of the Lord. And it reminds to us uh, the fundamental things in our salvation. Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you, which is given for you. And he is saying, these are my blood of the New Testament. So we are saved. And uh, the real Christian, even if he loses his life, he doesn't lose it. Bible compares it uh, with peace, uh, with sleep. And I was uh, reading Stefan's, uh, sto uh, Stefan's story. He was the first blood wit witness in the Acts. And this is the way how Christians are dying. His last prayer was, Father, don't uh, put this sin on them. 
Father, not God, please revenge, give them revenge, and you, all of you are cursed, and your children and grandchildren will suffer for what you did here. A Christian says the same words that Jesus said, Father, don't uh, put the sin on them. And then the next sentence comes, and then he said it, and uh, he went to sleep. Bible compares death to sleep. A real Christian will not uh, see death. But are we real Christians? Are you a real Christian? Vilnius, is it possible that now you are talking about real Christianity? Here, uh, today, when we'll have Holy Communion, we'll enjoy it. Uh, this is done only by real Christians, right? In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, Apostle Paul speaks to the Church of Corinth before the Holy Communion. And he says, uh, verse 28, But let man examine the himself, uh, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. In order not uh, to have a long theological discussion, but in essence he is saying that among you there are people who have accepted salvation, but then there are people who have not accepted it at the same time, and but they don't know about it. And he is saying, let uh, people test themselves, examine themselves. Uh, not any of the pastors have this authority to be able to assess and examine somebody else's uh, soul. This is what we have to do by ourselves, and this is the task I would like uh, to entrust to you, so that you look into your soul, whether you in reality are saved. And one more scripture I would like to remind you, and this is from Matthew 25, where there is a story about these last days before uh, arrival of Christ, and we read that the kingdom of God will be like uh, ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. So ten virgins and I am sure that the story is about Christians and what is scary and all of this is that one half a half of those who consider themselves Christians or look like that from a side they actually didn't get to the destination 50% um, were left halfway Imagine that you and me, we are flying on a plane. All of us are uh, given parachutes. And suddenly the air hostess comes and says uh, that I need to say a true fact that uh, only half of these uh, bags uh, contain uh, parachutes. So the rest are just uh, uh, bags with uh, blankets and pillows in case if uh, you get cold. Wouldn't you be interested to discover what's in your bag, whether it's a parachute or just uh, something else? Would you want to find it out? I believe this is a good time to find it out, whether you are a real Christian or you are just uh, added some Christian uh, attributes to your life, some Christian uh, signs and but in essence you have not accepted uh, Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So it's said here that half of those people who went uh, to meet the bridegroom, they didn't uh, get to the end. And I would like to hope that among us there is nobody like that. That uh, Church Priekovest is a church where all 99.9%, all of them are real Christians. And this 0.001% uh, that is not, uh, it's somebody who came here to, to, to spy out a little bit or to, to say something bad about this church. 
But most possibly it's not like that because um, this parable, this parable that there are people who take everything uh, just uh, from the surface, who are not in reality, they're looking for some uh, quick solutions for some time and they are among Christians and this is what Paul is writing in uh, this uh, letter to Corinthians so let uh, people examine themselves and today I would like to look at uh, several principles together with you and let's open Matthew 13 and we will look uh, in this uh, Matthew 13 we will read verse uh, 45 till 44 and 45 Matthew 13:44. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. So the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. We would like to explain this parable that we are the ones who are looking for this treasure. But the truth is uh, not like that, because in this chapter it is explained what is this field, and this field is the world. And the one who is uh, looking or finding this treasure is God. God is looking in this world for people, or He has found people who would respond to His love, who would accept His uh, gospel and fall in love in him, with him. And those are the people who are hidden. They cannot be seen today. They are not different, no different from the rest of humanity. People whom, in the eyes of God, uh, God sees them as, as a treasure. And then it's said that it was hid, and, and he was happy, and he sells all he has and buys that field. This is what Jesus did. He purchased all the humanity. He saved everyone. He took all sins, all uh, iniquities, all punishments that humanity deserved. And therefore, Jesus uh, is not passive today when he is looking at uh, these uh, and this violence which is uh, happening in Ukraine. This is not punishment of God. When punishment of God would come, and we know that the day is approaching when this time of grace would end, and God will start uh, punishing the humanity for numerous sins and uh, rebellion against God and uh, also mocking God. And when God's punishment would come, it uh, will not uh, uh, touch upon uh, real children of God. It will be only for those part of uh, uh, humans. We know that some part of sun would uh, not uh, shine anymore, the comet would uh, strike the earth and the uh, Bible describes so many things uh, and this situation in Ukraine uh, then would seem something insignificant, so, so insignificant in comparison what happens when God judges uh, the earth and people for their sins, everything that uh, was uh, uh, comes together for this time, but God has not changed this uh, yet. The time of grace has not yet ended, and we still have uh, safety and authority to stand against the aggression. This is not God's will, whatever it is. And so he purchases uh, all and buys all the field, all humanity, with an idea that he is interested in this treasure. Those, this treasure is those people who would accept him as the Lord, as the sa Savior, who would give uh, their lives to him, who would fall in love for him and would love more than their lives. But um, see, the main idea I would like you to note 
He gives, sells and gives away everything he has. He sells everything in order to be able to buy this uh, field. And this is what Jesus did. In order to save you and me, he gave away everything. Ga God gave everything away. And this is the moral of this parable. And let us read next uh, verse uh, 45, where he says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he has found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. My dear friends, once more, he is saying the same. In the eyes of God, a human who loves him means a lot to him, a lot to him. In the eyes of God, this is the most precious pearl in all this universe. The most precious things for God is uh, are humans. You, you who have answered and responded to his uh, salvation and his uh, gift of love. He purchased you for him. He not didn't steal you or, or took away from something or privatized or something. He purchased you and he gave away everything to get you and me. And how does it make you feel? How does it resonate in your soul that God gave away everything to get you? And this principle explains to us how it works and not in other way. When we speak about God, He gave away everything. And when we speak about ourselves, we cannot just uh, 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 entrust God only 10% or entrust something a little bit uh, from our life, uh, a little bit from our Sunday or some moments. He gave away everything and so we have to act adequately as well and this is uh, Christianity. And in Luke 14, Jesus says, and here uh, he speaks very ultimately and specifically how it works. He says, the same, none of you who doesn't give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. The same, none of you who doesn't um, forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. So what does it mean to forsake everything? I, build, I have something, uh, discipleship, uh, I'm not telling anyone what I own and nobody's asking and so on. Yes, it is between you and God. But I would like to say that there are people who uh, set out uh, some limits uh, how much they are prepared to sacrifice for Jesus and those are people for whom uh, in life everything is more or less okay they are nice, educated, talented people basically uh, they have a good lives and there is only one thing maybe they have some addiction, alcohol addiction or maybe they are not so good in finances or maybe they don't know how to educate children or they are depression or anger, some something where they need a little pu push uh, from God. So help me here. Uh, basically, I'm good. Basically, I get by. I am a normal person. Uh, basically, I am saved because such people as me are saved. I am 95% better than the rest of people. I just need uh, this little bit from Jesus. And um, those are the foolish uh, virgins who are ready to go and meet uh, the bridegroom, but not till the end. Not to become some bigots or... Uh, uh, it's something different with me. With me, it's totally different. I was lost uh, totally. I was a teenager. I understood that I'm broken, not nice, uh, 
evil and thinking evil things. I was rotten. I was rotten as a father, as a, a husband, as a citizen. Just um, uh, in one word, I was a sinner. And it wasn't enough for me to improve something a little bit here or there. No, I was totally useless. And I am encouraged by words of Jesus uh, where in Mark 2 he says that I didn't come to invite those who are just but sinners. He is saying that those who are healthy, they don't need the doctor. But I was totally ill and uh, totally destroyed in all areas. And I needed a savior for everything. And my dear friends, today I would like to say that this is what Jesus is saving. If you need a little bit here or a little bit there, you are not saved. If you need Jesus to improve your family life, so that you don't uh, cheat your husband or wife, that you are nice to your children. It doesn't work then. He came to those who were sinners in their essence. Bible reveals to us that the man who is a sinner, he has the fabric of sin, factory of sin. And sometimes we know that the person who is beautiful, educated, and knows how to speak nicely, knows various psychological methods, and tells about various methods, and how to keep peace, and how to speak, educate children, and, and how to uh, speak to the spouse and speaks about meditation and some yoga, how you calm down and so on, and how all this started. And you can be deceived and you might think that he is so good. I believe more in the Bible than other stories. And I believe that uh, uh, there is also a killer, a pedophile, also murderer and uh, also a thief. But uh, there sh should be just uh, certain circumstances and all this can come out. And I was like that. I was born and, and I grew up in a Christian family. I hadn't heard any swearing words. My first cigarette I smoked when I was in the army and when nobody saw I, I, I thought I would need to tr try it out. I have never been really drunk in my life, but I knew that I am lost. If Jesus doesn't save me, I am going straight to hell. But thanks to God that he saved me. He saved me. The wage of sin is death, but uh, the God gives eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the person who doesn't give up on everything he has, what do we have? Of course, we have our properties and we might think, yeah, I'm so successful entrepreneur. I have some skills. I know how to move money around. But we were just uh, talking about the Kapos, uh, where the legion was uh, kicked out of this man. And when this was done, there were 2,000 pigs. And possibly all oh, this city was a business project, successful and economic, and they are, were making money on those pigs and uh, so wealthy people. And in one day, when the devil was uh, kicked out, uh, he took out uh, all these pigs. In one day, all your uh, work you have saved up for all your life and you consider your property this is uh, just uh, pigs uh, who disappear from your life and leave you sad and sorrow. If you think that your property is your great value, I am I'm so sorry for you. If you think that your knowledge, your skills, uh, maybe your philosophical knowledge, maybe something how you were treated badly, that uh, all this, uh, your wisdom is something you wouldn't give up uh, for Jesus, then I'm sorry. 
and you are not saved. Because everything that uh, is between you and Jesus, everything that uh, doesn't allow you to trust him as uh, his savior, 100% as healer, as the one who sets you free, uh, the, who is your teacher and your God. All this is uh, just an idol, and it stands uh, higher than Jesus. And the person who comes to Jesus and says that he is in a total bankruptcy as a, a man or woman or sister or brother or, sister or daughter or son or Christian or entrepreneur, that uh, in all this you have bankruptcy and you say, God, I somehow didn't understand it. God, somehow I had missed it. I need you. If you don't help me, I am in, in the hell with all my knowledge and experience and my money and everything that I am. I am moving towards a total tragedy and everything that I disseminate in life is tragedy. And only Jesus can save from this. None of you who doesn't give up on everything he owns this is a place, the place of your bankruptcy, the place where you say, I admit I have nothing good in me. I have nothing that I could uh, trust on when I am approaching you. You are my hope. My dear brother and sister, this morning I don't want to downgrade you or what you have done and how you have approached God so far. Today I would like you to look at yourself and see whether you are a sinner who was saved by Jesus. Are you the one who can come to him and trust him? Not because you are wise and disciplined and healthy and so on, you're reliable and um, selfless, but only because Jesus paid this huge price for you. He is the one who gives a meaning to all that you are doing, meaning that will stay forever. And if there is no Jesus in there, maybe the whole world is applauding to you, but it, uh, your life has no meaning. Your life has no uh, remaining uh, fruit, uh, no content, no trajectory, no nothing which takes you to eternity. If Jesus Jesus is not uh, the foundation of your life, the main riches of your life, you have nothing. You can change it today. You can make sure that you have this parachute. And if uh, something happens to you, anything that could happen to you, that you would fall asleep. And in a moment, like Stefan is saying, Jesus, accept my spirit and you will meet your Savior and Lord, whom you have entrusted your life. I'm not saying that the worst uh, things would start and that uh, bombs would fall in Latvia. I believe God will save Latvia, that we will have a revival here. And also in Ukraine, uh, the huge spiritual revival would start as a consequence of all this, uh, to all of this violence. I believe that God has uh, found a lot of pearls in this world and he wants to get all of them. And if people respond to him, they would be happy with the Lord. My dear brother and sister, in a moment we will enjoy the Holy Communion and we will take those symbols in our hand. One speaks about uh, him giving away his physical human life and the second speaks about you being in a covenant with God. God has sworn and approved that he would be real. Uh, he, you can even be trusted by blood of his son. This is not the blood of animals, but the blood of Jesus that I would never forsake or leave you. And before you have it, I would like you to understand. Maybe there is a doubt in your heart. Maybe in your heart, uh, 
you have some contemplations. I wouldn't want, I really wouldn't want, I really wouldn't want that uh, someone of us would be this foolish uh, virgin who is just uh, walking along. Let's see. Yeah, and for now I'm here. Uh, for now I'm trusting him. Paul would have said, I don't care. I like how Sadrach, Mezak and Abednego says, those uh, Hebrew guys said, even if God wouldn't touch his, uh, wouldn't move his finger and wouldn't bless anything in my life, even if I wouldn't succeed in anything, even if I didn't receive healing or um, financial welfare, if nothing changed in my life, my Lord is Jesus Christ, and I would uh, die with uh, his word on my lips, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. I would like to say that this uh, this person is for, for reality saved. 